Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on scatter plots. What you'll learn in this lesson is how to construct a scatter plot and how to interpret scatter plots. So in our vocabulary startup, recall that the graph of a linear equation is a line on the coordinate plane. The slope of the line describes the direction and steepness of the line. On the coordinate graph shown, or coordinate grid shown, graph and label two lines. One line should have a positive slope, and one line should have a negative slope. Well, for a positive slope, as our x's increase, our y's need to increase. And so that's going to be a line that goes in this type of direction here. This would be a line with a positive slope. Again, since our rise over run, you know, we're going up positively and to the right positively. Versus a line that goes like this. This would be an example of a negative slope. Since our y's decrease as our x's increase. Now, as we continue on to our real world link, the table shows temperatures in degrees Celsius and the corresponding temperatures in Fahrenheit from a local weather station. Graph the ordered pairs C, F. So our Celsius will be our X and our Fahrenheit will be our Y. Is the slope of the line passing through the points positive or negative? Well, we'll start with 0, 032. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here to get a graph this a bit better. So 0, 032 would be right around here. 541 is right around here. 1050 is right exactly there. 1559 here. 2068 there. 2577 here ish. And 3086 right about there. Well, is the slope of the line positive or negative? Well, as our X's are increasing, our Y's are also increasing. And so I would say that this is a positive result, a positive slope. So as we look to construct a scatter plot, data with two variables or pairs of numerical observations like Celsius and Fahrenheit are called bivariate data. A scatter plot shows the relationship between bivariate data graphed as ordered pairs on a coordinate plane. For example, the bivariate data set year and number of visitors can be displayed as a scatter plot. So in our first guided example, construct a scatter plot of the number of viewers who watched new seasons of a certain television show. So we'll let our x-axis, which is our horizontal axis, represent the number of seasons, which is right there. We'll let the vertical axis or y-axis represent the number of viewers, and we have that here. Now this little special feature there is called a break. You can have a break in your graph since you can notice, you know, we're not going 0, 20, 40, 60. We have a little break and then we go counted by fours, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, and 40. Now, you can see how this is graphed, and it doesn't form an exact line. The points are kind of, well, scattered. That's why it's a scatter plot. But you can look and see, well, generally, it looks like our slope is going a bit down. Looks like it's a bit of a negative slope. And we're not asked to make that interpretation yet, but it helps to see on this where our slope looks to be a little bit negative. And so a conclusion we could interpret from this is, 
as the seasons of a television show go on, the number of viewers decreases. So do we got it? Construct a scatter plot of the weight of an alligator at various times after hatching. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this again. Now, our time will be labeled as our x-axis, so weeks, or as our other variable, weight, will be our y. And now we're going to look to graph these points. At zero weeks, our weight is six pounds. At nine weeks, it's eight and six tenths pounds. So it's a little bit of a guess here of exactly where it's going to go, but it should be somewhere right around this area. 18 weeks is exactly 10. Twenty-seven weeks is thirteen and six tenths. Thirty-four is fifteen pounds. Forty-three is seventy-three, or excuse me, seventeen, a little bit difference there, and two tenths. And 49 weeks is 19 and 8 tenths pounds, so almost at the tippy-top corner of our graph. And again, we're not asked to interpret this yet, but do notice how we have a positive slope. So as time goes on, the weight of the alligator increases. And so now we get down to types of association. Now, a positive association, just like a positive slope, as our x increases, our y increases. So this is positive association. As our x increases and our y decreases, this is negative association. And if these points are all scattered everywhere here, that would just be no association. Now, linear versus nonlinear association, if the data points lie close to a line, if you can kind of draw a line in here, that's linear. But when you have a little bit of a curve here, that would be nonlinear. Now you can analyze the shape of the distribution of a scatter plot to investigate patterns of association. If the distribution shows a positive or negative association, then the distribution can be classified as linear or nonlinear. The scatter plot below shows a positive nonlinear association. Clusters or outliers can also be identified. So as our x increases, our y increases, and you can notice that we have a generally positive association here. And notice how it kind of curves a bit. It's not exactly a line. It kind of curves a bit. And so we do have another word here called cluster, where you can see a bunch of data points all gathered at once or an outlier that's just kind of sitting out there in the middle of nowhere that doesn't fit the general trend. So in our second guided example, interpret the scatter plot of the data for the amount of memory in an MP3 player and the cost based on the shape of the distribution. It says to consider the different associations and patterns. As the amount of money increases, the cost increases. Therefore, it shows a positive association. And that is true. As our memory increases, our cost also increases. So we do have a positive association. Linear, the data appears to lie close to a line, so the association is linear. You can kind of see a line forming here. It's not curved. You can kind of see a line here. And any other patterns? Well, there does appear to be a cluster of data right here. One to two gigabytes of memory cost between 30 and 75. And then there's not really an outlier because you can kind of draw a line here and everything's close to that line. And so in our got it questions, interpret the scatter plot of the data for the time elapsed and temperature of water based on the shape of the distribution. 
Well, the first thing we want to look at is our variable association. So to do that, what's going on as our time increases? As our time increases, our temperature is decreasing. And so we'll write that. As the time increases, the temperature decreases. And so what does that mean? It means we have negative association. So you want to look to compare your x with your y. As time is increasing, what's going on with your y variable? Well, in this case, it's decreasing. It's causing our negative association. Next, we want to look into the linear association. Is this a line or is this a curve? Well, this appears to be a line. So we can say the data appear to lie close to a line, comma, so the association is linear. Now, for other patterns, do we have any clusters or outliers? I don't see any data clustered together, and I don't see any data that's just kind of out there, like if you had a point out here, that would be an outlier, but it looks like our data is not clustered and no outliers, so we do want to make note of that. We don't want to just skip it. So we do want to write, there are no clusters or outliers. And that's our answer for question B. In question C, interpret the scatter plot for the data for two weeks in May and the amount of ice cream sold at a shop based on the shape of the distribution. Well, we first want to look at our variable association. As our x's are increasing, what's happening with our y's? So as our days are increasing in May, what's happening with our number of pints? A little bit of everything. You really can't have a trend here. Um, there really is no variable association because as the days are increasing, you can't say, oh, our pints are increasing or our pints are decreasing. You can't say either. So for this question, we're going to say there does not appear to be any variable association. And because of that, the association is neither linear or nonlinear. Remember, you have to either have a positive or negative association to then say it's linear or nonlinear. If there is no association, then you're not going to be able to say whether it's linear or nonlinear. And lastly, we can then look at other patterns. Are there any clusters or outliers? And I would say no. So there are no clusters or outliers. In our third guided example, the table shows public school enrollment from 1999 to 2010. Well, number of years, you can see since 1999, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And the number of students. And then our question asked us to construct and interpret a scatter plot of the data. 
if an association exists, make a conjecture about the number of students that will be enrolled in public schools in 2015. So we constructed a scatter plot of the data. Our x-axis is our time, so y, or years, excuse me. And our y-axis is the number of students in millions. And you can see there's a general positive trend going on here. And our variable association as the years increase, the number of students increase. Therefore, the scatter plot shows a positive association. Linear, it looks like we do have a line here. It doesn't look to be curved, so, so it is linear. And there are no clusters or outliers. Now, to make a conjecture about the number of students that will be enrolled in public schools in the year 2015, follow the pattern until x value is 16. Why 16? Well, that's the amount of years after 1999. So 16 years after 1999 is 2015. So if you just follow this line out all the way to 16, it looks like we're going to be here at 51 million students. So again, if you just kind of follow this line all the way out and keep going, there's nothing wrong with actually drawing it in either and ending up here at about 51 million students enrolled in public schools in 2015. And now we get to try this for our last example today. Interpret the scatter plot shown for the men's Olympics 100 meter freestyle swim winning times. If an association exists, make a conjecture about the winning time in the 2016 Olympics. If we first look for our variable association, do we have positive or negative? Well, as our x's are increasing, or as our time increases, what's going on with our winning times? they appear to be going down. So I would say that there is a negative association here. And then we check for our linear association. So are we forming a line or is it curved? Well, this looks like it's a line. And so we can say this is a linear association as well. And if you wanted to combine that into a negative linear association, you could. Are there any clusters or outliers? Do we have any times that don't really fit the line? Not really. So there are no clusters or outliers. And now, we can draw in a line here. Try to observe how this is going. And take a look at how our x-axis is moving. Every two spots is eight years. So we're actually only drawing it out to right here at 2016. So as we try to draw in a line here, it's not going to be perfect as I draw this in, but you're going to try to draw in a best fit line that goes through as many of these points as you possibly can. And that's somewhat close. I mean, this is going to be kind of a guess for now. But your prediction here looks like it's at about 46 and a half seconds. So we can write the winning time will be about 46 and 5 tenths, or 46 and a half seconds. And again, whether you draw in that line or just try to visualize, okay, I'm going down in this way and with your finger go, okay, going this way, this way, this way, this way, where am I going to be? That works too. Um, or you could try to draw in a line just to kind of see what you're doing as well. And that is it for this lesson on scatter plots. Good luck.